Hey everyone, uh, it's such an odd place to be. Uh, so I hated academics. <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah, I can see someone supporting my choices. <laughs> so uh, we all start somewhere, right? We all start somewhere, and uh, you know, we eventually we try to uh, identify ourselves. You know, and in the same way. Uh, I tried to apply a label to myself. Um, I always thought I was a misfit somewhere uh, at some point of my time, uh, of my life, because um, you know um, it's very important. It's very important because uh, when TEDx people called me, you know I was in a great dilemma because you know I gave three choices. You know the choice of I, I was already you know suspecting the choices of my life, and now I, I have like another uh, round of choices, like three of them literally, and I had to choose between what I was. And uh, something uh, about misfit, you know, uh, I was doing some justification for my choices. So I think uh, it goes well with my uh, uh, profession or about, uh, about my personality uh, per se. So um, yeah, so I was saying uh, it, it is really important uh, to label ourselves as uh, something, you know, uh, a feeling where we belong. You know, uh, the belonging is where you're accepted for who we, who you are. You know. Uh, so, so that we can discover ourselves and you know what you know whatever we want to be or who we are meant to be. So that's that's really important in life. So uh, a tribe where we will where we um, you know sh uh, share the same thoughts as other people and sh share the same interests. The community is uh, what which is really important for the belongingness. So uh, uh, when when these people called me for the talk, I was uh, I was literally unaware of you know how. Um, how to elaborate this uh, thought process because it's been really complicated, you know. Because I'm, I'm not a man of many words, you know. I usually let my work speak, my, speak for myself. So that's 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 kind of easier, right? You know, uh, le uh, less less words and more work. That's always fruitful enough. So, uh, but still, anyway, um, uh, this life I've led has led me to uh, identify myself as a misfit, and eventually. Uh, it was it was something which was very much um, what do you call it? Uh, it was very much fruitful. So uh, to be honest, I was never bullied. Uh, I was never uh, made fun of, or I was never ridiculed for the choices I've made, even by my family. So uh, in fact, to be honest, it was my mother you know, who actually pushed me into pursuing art. So uh, I was I was somewhere around five or six years old. And uh, I come from uh, school uh, with a drawing my friend had made. Um, so I was really excited. That's because you know, that was not even something I did. I don't even know why I was excited. But I, I kind of liked it very much. I showed it to her, and she was like, she just asked a simple question, like, why don't you draw too? And uh, uh, believe me, you know, she never asked me to even study. <laughs> so, so I, it was like something which was. Um, a, a comfortable zone for me. So she was always very much supportive, uh, just like my dad. So um, I was. She, she just asked me, like, why don't you draw too? So I was like, okay, why? Why not? So believe me, when I say this, these five words changed my entire life. So uh, I didn't even, uh, you know, it, it's it's very surreal that I'm here today, uh, you know, sharing uh, my little story with you guys. But you know, it's still something which is un unfathomable for me. So, um, so I was. So by the way, it was a drawing of. Uh, I tried to imitate that when my mother asked me that. You know, I wanted to imitate the drawing my friend had made. It was uh, the first drawing ever, and my favorite Popeye the Sailor Man. So, uh, so the good old Popeye. So uh, some, it was. Uh, I I shared a good personal connection with that cartoon, and um, uh, and uh, you know I really wish you guys uh, you know. Sort of seen that proper um, 90s legendary cartoon network stuff. So uh, anyway, uh, so I was I, I was doing my own stuff. You know, I was so much thrilled after completion. You know, that little sketch there. I wouldn't even call it sketch. It's too fancy, right? And I, I just drew that little drawing in my sketchbook, and it was it was really good. You know, I felt actually um, I, I was feeling like I was a, I was a class topper. <laughs> So uh, it was something which was uh, really, really uh, happy, and I felt that you know this was all it, uh, this was all I wanted. So um, uh, the high I got after that particular, uh, you know, completion of that particular drawing, you know, my mom was appreciating the work. I don't know, it was it was really, really important for me. 
so uh, after that, I, I just I, I just continued sketching. You know, it was just uh, it was unlike uh, any of my peers from uh, back then. So it was like a, you know this particular passion has consumed everything within me. You know, it has given me uh, so much than whatever it took away from me. You know, it's like you know this wildfire, right? You know, the wildfire which requires a little blaze, a little flame, which which swallows everything in its path. But you know, it, it, it's like regenerates the forest and you know renews the soil and uh, uh, and resets the ecosystem. You know, it just led me towards a bigger, brighter, and better uh, version of myself. So, uh, so later that I was not even um, to be honest, I, it was, I didn't even know that uh, you know this would be the case. But I was always you know I always identified myself as someone uh, who's who has a different who had a different taste altogether. In it could be in comics. I used to be so much into comics and uh, uh, cartoon network stuff, and with my own candy. So I was I was this little kid just sketching away in the back bench of my class. I had I had I had no too many friends, you know. Uh, I think most of the misfits don't, you know. I'm sure many can relate to me. It was always a matter of quality versus quantity, and I always chose quality to be honest. That's because you kind of respect your time. You kind of uh, I, I'm not into small talks. So uh, I kind of it, it was it was okay for me. It was working well, you know. No one no one actually um, um, gelled with my uh, interests. You know, I used to most of the times I used to watch these obscure uh, some of the language cartoons and uh, movies, and I used to read this comic stuff and all. And um, all these uh, most of the kids of my age never used to you know either used to find boring or serious. Like they they were like you know what's this dude. So uh, I used to just run back home for uh, to just to watch Pokemon and Beyblade and all the stuff, you know, uh, just like a good old Tsunami days. So it was it, it was it was this way. So all I remember in my life is just math. So nothing else. I was really bad at math, and thank God I knew that uh, because I was actually identified myself as a very bad student. And uh, if I was I was never a particularly good student to be honest. So that's the reason why I remember it so well. So. Yeah, so in that way it, it, it just it, the time passed by, and uh, you know after that it was it was just m most of my friends were busy in you know uh, figuring out their own lives about their uh, uh, tenth, tenth examinations and all the stuff what to take in and their intermediate junior colleges and all the stuff, and I was like what to draw today Pikachu or uh, Raichu <laughs> or, or, or what to draw Bulbas or a Squirtle. Like, I was like, so my friends were like, dude, are you serious? <laughs> so I was literally on the, uh, on the throne when my 10th results was announced. You know? I, I was just picking my nose, you know? I was like, chilled out, like laid back, I, because I knew what I want to do, uh, but my, my dad did not. <laughs> but, but though I was never stressed on it because I, I was somewhere, uh, you know, chilled that he would understand my choices. Uh, because he understood it very well. If you want to crack the fine art exam after intermediate, it's good. If not, you know we have a mechanical shop, you know, mechanic shop down there. So you're going to join there and work your ass off. <laughs> Sorry for that. Part of my French. So, <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, so that was the case, you know. Uh, but he never questioned the choice. He never asked that, you know, why do you want to do this? You know, can you earn enough? At least for yourself. He never, he never said that because I was watching Cartoon Network and and those cartoons were created by someone. You know, it was someone who was creating it, and yeah, so it went that way. And I was just going on and on. I was just drawing all these Pokemons and stuff. And at this point, you know, most of it, the appreciation always, you know, what let me uh, pursue this passion is something which is even more important. Because in uh, during during this um, uh, schooling of mine, uh, most of my friends, you know, used to ask my, you know, they used to find me, especially my teachers. Uh, you know, they used to find me in the back bench of the, of the classroom, you know, always sketching and doodling and, you know, caricaturing uh, lecturers and all. So, so uh, they used to find me. I was caught so many times and, uh, you know, uh, at this point of my life, setbacks came to me in the form of them throwing away my skateboards out of the grass and sometimes me, you know. Uh, so, uh, it was, uh, it just fueled that, uh, you know, uh, inner passion a bit more further, to be honest. It just, you know, it made me feel like this is what I want to do. So uh, I never felt bad. I went out of the class, sat down, started drawing again. So because I never missed math. 
So in all science or physics or whatever it is. So, uh, so that was the reason. And after that, um, uh, my friends always, even when I was in 4th standard or 6th standard or 8th standard, so my friends in the class, you know, they used to, they, they were very curious because, you know, uh, in an ambience which, you know, which is surrounded with academics, you know, there is this guy who keeps always, you know, who always keeps drawing stuff and all. There is always this curiousness, okay, what is, what, what's this guy uh, drawing today? Okay, so what would be the end result? So, um, so most of my friends, they used to pass along the sketchbook. You know, it, it was, they, they found it really amusing and they found it really hilarious at the same time good. So they were appreciating my art. You know, it was, it was really something which an artist needs. An artist needs audience. You know, it could be anyone. A performance artist needs audience. So I had them in the early stages of my life and it was even more thrilling, you know, to be honest. It, that particular point, you know, school was something which uh, I miss a lot because I, I needed that appreciation, you know, not for the studies. <laughs> so, so yeah, um, that actually is, was a major factor which fueled my further decision to pursue art. So after that, I was uh, actually uh, um, uh, started freelancing after that. I, I know I, I just joined an art college and all this stuff happened. You know, I heard that there is this college in Hyderabad who's you know uh, who's offering uh, this fine arts uh, uh, course, and you know you, you just go there and draw every day. You know, so it sounded like my choice. Uh, between that, there was this uh, little stint called Junior College, uh, so where I actually taught my college, I think so, because it was it was easy. <laughs> so I really liked it, but still, you know, I, I always wanted to draw. So, so yeah, uh, for those who have know these guys. So uh, anyway, uh, so after that, I just. It just went away. It just, it just the junior college passed away, and also the fine art. And I started, um, you know, doing caricatures. Meanwhile, uh, you know, uh, around the process of my fine art um, uh, college. So I was, I was actually drawn to this particular art form, you know, which is my specialization right now. You know, uh, so uh, that's because so most of the portraiture you see on internet or anywhere, you know, I love portraiture, but. So I, I, I somehow feel that it is it kinds of arrests an artist the liberty of an artist. So you know I don't want to draw the same face again and again for the same likeness. You know no offense for the subject, but um, I, I find it a bit boring. But when it comes to caricature, the beauty of this art form, you know, for, uh, for which it, it pulled me towards it. The reason why why this particular art form had too much of gravity is because of its um, liberty, it, the liberty it gives to an artist. So you can pursue, you can you can pursue this art form. You know, you, you can just go free. You can, you know, sometimes it gives a much more insight to a, a subject's you know, personality than a portraiture does. So it, 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 you can just put a put your own twist about how you perceive the subject, and you can just uh, you know make it you know, make personal spin uh, touch to it. So you can just spin it off. And 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 here the beauty is, yet the uh, caricature resembles the, the subject. The portrait, so that's that's even more uh, interesting. So and that's challenging enough. Every caricature attempt is something which is absolutely different. So no caricature is alike, yet it resembles the same. So that's something which actually, you know, uh, was quite exciting to even to uh, imagine. So I started making those. I I slowly and eventually, you know, um, uh, started practicing uh, very vigorously, literally every day. Just like they say, when you're passionate about something, do it every day. Unless you do it every day, you don't, you know, you cannot improve your command on it. I don't, uh, you know, I don't want to master this craft because if you want to master something, you know, you stop learning. You know, there is there is nothing like mastering something. You just develop a command on it, and then you get better tomorrow, and then you get a bit more better day after tomorrow. So it only happens when you try to do something every day. That's what you call practice, or hobby, or, or perseverance, or patience. It could be anything, but it has to be done daily. So, uh, so yeah, uh, that's one of my uh, uh, favorite uh, actors, actually. <laughs> yeah, that's that's I tweaked it a bit because I love Margaret Robbie. <laughs> so anyway. Uh,
So that's something which uh, you know, which actually pulled me into this caricature stuff. Eventually, I also uh, got down into character design and also master designing. So uh, I I went complete fine art. You know, digital art happened, then and I was I was buying all this stuff and iPad Pro and all all these things, and I wanted to draw everything and anything. You know, I, I I knew nothing but drawing, so this was the only choice I had. So uh, and I was already in the art college. So uh, I I never had uh, this uh, what do you call? I never had this feeling of working under someone. You know, it was always kind of very much rigid to me. So I started uh, freelancing, and uh, it was it was it just started with few caricatures. I had to draw multitudes of caricatures for an advertising agency in Hyderabad, so I was paid. So it, it felt good. I thought it was freelancing, and I never was working under someone. It was even more liberating. So I started taking up projects, and uh, yeah, it just went on like that. But still, just like any other profession, it has its own ups and downs. You know, the struggles are real. You know, you could feel that sometimes. Uh, so sometimes it is. Literally, um, you you are literally there. There is lots of uh, flooding of projects where you cannot even uh, uh, allow yourself to sleep or eat properly. You know, uh, it's it's like you kind of develop a tunnel vision where you just look at your deadlines and nothing else in your day. So uh, so that's what happens. But on the other side, there is also this drought uh, space where you don't have any projects anymore. You know, it makes you question your own skills because you don't have projects anymore and there's the, the competition out there is rampant. You need to, you know, everyone is just trying to get better at themselves and at what they are doing. Just like me, you know, they're just trying to, uh, they're just trying to, uh, you know, do whatever they want to. So uh, most of the times, it, you know, it, it was the same way. So I, I bought my ass off and I just started to get there slowly. And eventually, I, I, I found myself illustrating for Netflix, Microsoft, and. Uh, you know, uh, there were there were many other stuff which happened uh, in, in the meanwhile. So in, in between all this, I want to do something for uh, uh, the community of artists, especially in Hyderabad, since the art scene was really really done. So I started to form uh, a community with help of different artists, and we tried to bring them together. It was not working, so we started to uh, I started to have an uh, have an idea where uh, you know we could actually spread some good knowledge because I struggled as an artist learning some techniques, it was very much tough to figure it out on myself. So I wanted to uh, you know, conduct workshops and give it back to the art community out there, especially in this part of the country, which, which is in dire need. So uh, I would really love to uh, you know, go, uh, go get out there, teach, and all this stuff, you know, which makes me uh, identify myself as a misfit at the same time. You know, I, 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 would, I would mutually uh, what, what do you say? I would mutually ins get inspired by other people who are pursuing their own creative interests. You know, that's what which um, you know makes me go. So, for those who are out there, you know, who identify themselves as misfits, you know, uh, just realize that there is always a space for you, and you know, you can always uh, you don't have to find it. You make one for yourself, and uh, you know, you just don't rest, and you know, unless you find it. And I would, I would just say, stay productive and uh, just keep, just keep doing whatever you love. You know, it doesn't matter even if it's engineering or medicine or art or you know, anything. Just do what you love. You know, and go till way, go till that position where you get paid for whatever you're doing. So that's more important. So yes, uh, yeah. that's my little journey. So uh, just stay inspired and stay productive.